Thank you, uh, you know, Chairman Bishop, and, and I deeply appreciate the opportunity. And in last Congress, when you and I had a number of conversations about this, and Ranking Member Gravalia as well, um, this is an important hearing, and I'm, I'm glad I could be here supporting my friend and colleague Dan Beneshek, uh, who uh, is uh, picked up the baton that uh, not just me in last Congress, but my predecessor prior to that, Peter Hookstra, had spent uh, nearly a decade working on. And uh, I'm hoping to maybe give you a little uh, color commentary to uh, the great description that Dr. Beneshek had had. And I guess I can tell you that uh, Sleeping Bear uh, National Lakeshore is uh, near and dear to me uh, and my family, not only on a professional but on a personal level. And in fact, earlier this summer, my oldest two boys, uh, 15 and 14, spent a week uh, canoeing in the area all the way out to uh, the, the, the islands out there, Manitou Island. They didn't canoe out to the island. That would be a long, long trip. But uh, they were transported out there uh, and spent time in that area. And it truly is a magical place. The Pure Michigan ads are true. That is what Michigan looks like. You need to come visit it and uh, bring your golf clubs as well. So uh, but my statement today is in support of this legislation introduced by Representative Beneshek, uh, Dave Camp, Mike Rogers, Fred Upton, Tim Wahlberg, and myself, as I said, a continuation of the efforts that had uh, taken place by my predecessor, Peter Hookstra, that will implement the, the new general management plan for Sleeping Bear National Lakeshore. Legislation was designated, uh, would designate approximately 32,000 acres uh, as wilderness, setting reasonable boundaries while preserving historic landmarks, protecting private property, which is extremely important for me as a former realtor and, and developer. I understand those private property needs. And the maintaining hunting and fishing rights exercised for generations. Also, another very important thing I know for myself, as well as uh, Dr. Beneshek, both avid outdoorsmen. H.R. 163 enjoys broad public support in Michigan and bipartisan, bicameral support in Congress. A companion measure introduced by Senators Levin and Stabenow passed the Senate by unanimous consent on June 19. More important, importantly, H.R. 163 protects an immensely popular component of the national park system. In fact, uh, as was uh, talked about, uh, this has been named one of the most beautiful places uh, in America. Uh, it has uh, seen countless uh, attention and uh, something that we all want to protect and use properly. Uh, the latest uh, National Park Service report shows that in 2011, 1.3 million visitors uh, came to Sleeping Bear National Lakeshore and spent almost $133 million in the park's surrounding communities, supporting an estimated uh, 2,300 jobs. And those, uh, for those, uh, anyone who has a rural area, those are uh, uh, well-needed and, uh, and hard-working jobs uh, for that area and, and uh, something that is extremely important to the local economy. Uh, but as I said, the road to introduction for this legislation was not easy. In fact, I was just uh, reminiscing with my friend, who you'll be hearing from a little later, uh, Janet Fahili, uh, from the Citizens for Access to the Lakeshore, Cal. Uh, and uh, we, were, uh, we were thinking it was about 13 years ago uh, that uh, she and I had our first meeting about this project. I was the district director for Congressman Hookstra at the time. And uh, we knew that this was something that was being discussed. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, Representative uh, um, Bart Stupak had had the area with the redistricting. It was coming into Peter Hookstra's area. And uh, on a bipartisan level, everybody was concerned and uh, needed to work on it. Um, so the, uh, the, the, in 2002, the National Park Service ignored, frankly, public input and developed a management plan that would have brought the park back to pre-Columbian era uh, 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 status, tearing up all the roads, the county roads, as, uh, as Dan had talked about, to the beaches, destroying many historic landmarks, and making much of the park virtually inaccessible to the public, uh, almost an exact opposite of what, uh, what I think the stated goal here is. This quickly resulted in a public outcry from northern Michigan, both the public and the private sectors. And to me, access is the key element that I pursued, I know Dr. Beneshek has pursued, and the proper usage there. So uh, it's, important, it's an important responsibility of Congress to hold the executive branch accountable for the actions, and particularly when they do not consult with the public or Congress. Congress should also recognize and act on those policies and recommendations when the public is fully engaged and supportive. 
HR 163 and his example of how this process can and should work, frankly. Local citizens and stakeholders have invested significant time and effort working with us, the National Park Service, uh, to develop appropriate policies for Sleeping Bears National Lakeshore. And again, I'd just like to thank the committee for recognizing the high level of local involvement, scheduling this hearing, and it's my hope that the full committee will soon send the, fill, full, the bill in front of the full House uh, for consideration and passage. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the time.